and welcome to this week's episode of the PS We Expire podcast. I'm Morgan. This episode is kind of a deviation from the episodes that I normally record. This one is super duper short. And one of the reasons why it's really short is because I'm sharing a concept with you that I feel like if I just continue to expound on it, that some of the potency will be lost. And so I just want to share a very short 10 minute episode with you that centers around this concept of shared knowledge when we're trying to express to someone else our experiences. So it all centers around a beautiful, delicious burrito. (laughs) So thank you for joining me for this week's episode. I am so glad that you're here. Hey, so I had this concept, this metaphor drop into my mind, and I want to share it with you because I think that it is, not only is it really powerful, but it it helps us to have so much more openness to other people's perspectives and helps us not kind of get stuck in our particular way of thinking as the right way of thinking. So my husband and I were having this conversation because he is very religious and I am spiritual, but not religious. So we have a lot of conversations around God, around the Bible. We have a lot of conversations about truth. We have a lot of conversations about what is good, what is right. And we were sitting at this little a Mexican restaurant with like the best burritos ever. (laughs) They're so good. And I get this big veggie burrito that is just full of corn and beans and rice and vegetables. And I put this like sweet, not hot at all salsa on it. And it's just, it's so good. And I'm eating this burrito and I, and I realize that any time I talk about the burrito, Anytime I tell somebody else the experience of eating the burrito, that's not actually eating the burrito. I can try my best to express the rapture that comes with eating this delicious veggie supreme burrito from this particular restaurant with this particular salsa. And it's so good. And I can use all the words to describe it to you. And you may have your mouth start watering and you may be able to picture in your mind what the burrito looks like and smells like and feels like. And you may be able even able to go to that place and order that burrito. But no matter how much I talk about it, that is not ever the experience of eating the burrito. Now, I'm the one who's closest to it because I'm the one who actually had the experience of eating the burrito, but I am relying on language and I'm relying on a common understanding like that you know what corn is and you know what rice is and you know what a tortilla is in order to be able to share my experience, in order for me to tell you my internal reality of eating this burrito and what that felt like in my body to be able to describe it to you. Now, If we both spoke Spanish, I would be using Spanish words to describe to you my burrito experience. If we spoke Chinese, if we spoke Japanese, it doesn't matter because we would have a shared language that we would be able to communicate about my internal experience. If you think about this in terms of our experiences with God or our experiences with the divine, there isn't really any way to adequately express an inexpressible experience. We can use words to try to get the other people up to speed or use words that maybe spark this familiar feeling in the other person to say, oh yes, like I've had that experience too. But no matter how much we talk about it, It's still not the experience of whatever emotional connection, spiritual connection, meaningful connection you have yourself with God or with the divine. This is where we get ourselves into trouble because we start to look at our religious frameworks or ideological frameworks as something more than they actually are. These religious or ideological frameworks are still just language models. 
there are still just ways for us to try together to describe the experience that we are having. There are ways for us to be able to communicate with other people and internal reality. And we get ourselves into trouble by insisting that my framework, my religious ideologies, my language of religion, my spiritual language is the only way to express that experience. Now, why is this such a problem? This is a problem when I say, I believe in God, and someone else says, I believe in Yahweh, I believe in Allah, I believe in the Buddha, even though the Buddha is not <laughs> a god. I believe in, you know, Vishnu, I believe in any of these things. And, and we are clinging to our descriptors, we are clinging to our words to be able to describe who this indescribable relationship is. I can't even say that it's like a person because it's it's not a person. And I'm not going to assert that it's just this like unknowable force either that isn't, you know, interested in in our lives because we all have different frameworks for for which we try and, you know, and put together the scaffolding in order to make sense of what we've personally experienced. Some people will have experiences but not slow down enough to ask questions about the way that they're describing their experience, or they may have an experience with God, but that is blocked by their frameworks, that they mistrust their experience because they don't have a language model or religious model to, to support or describe what they're feeling on the inside. So many people go through life uh, ignoring or distrusting or pushing aside that internal knowing, deep knowing, that intuitive experience of the divine or of God because of what they've been taught. What I want to suggest is that you do the hard work of taking a more zoomed out perspective on your theological, ideological language frameworks to ask yourself, am I clinging to the framework at the expense of relationship, at the expense of my internal knowing? Am I clinging to this because this feels solid? Am I clinging to this framework because this, this structure, this feels solid? There's a lot of evidence maybe that you've gathered to support that because it does feel, speaking from personal experience, it does feel scary to let go of that and say, I only will use now this pieces of this scaffolding that help me communicate with other people, but that it isn't necessarily a good representation of my internal experience. It is, it is really difficult to take that scaffolding apart, to take that framework apart, because people have told you that the framework is real. I'm I'm going to suggest that the framework's not real, but the experience is. Think about the burrito. <laughs> I'm actually contemplating getting a tiny burrito tattoo because I love this metaphor so much. It helps me stop forcing another person to know what it's like to taste a burrito in order to have a shared experience of what it's like to eat really good food. You don't have to eat a burrito. You don't even have to know what it is for us to be able to have a shared experience of what it's like for your hunger to be satisfied, what it's like to taste something really yummy, what it's like to share food with someone that you really care about, what it's like to share food over deep conversation. You don't have to be able to eat a burrito and you don't have to be able to understand what a burrito is in order for us to have a shared human emotion and experience in the same way. You don't have to have the same language that I do around God or the universe or source or the divine or the nothing or the great mystery, the great unknown, in order for us to have a shared understanding of what it's like to feel awe 
what it's like to feel love, what it's like to feel connected to everything. We don't have to have the exact same language in order for us to share in that knowledge and in that experience. So go forth and eat burritos <laughs> and think about the beauty of being able to connect on a deeper level beneath all of the ideologies, beneath all of the frameworks, even beneath language to be able to have connection and communion with other people and with God. <laughs>